Okay, in this video, we're going to determine continuity from a function. Uh, before we actually do the example, um, this is extremely important and very helpful that we have the following theorem, and it states that the following functions are continuous on their domain. So polynomials, continuous on their domain. Uh, rational functions. So a rational function, for example, could be like uh, x over x plus 1. So we're saying that this is a continuous function everywhere except at negative 1 because that makes the denominator 0. Uh, root functions, so like the square root of x plus 1, that's continuous everywhere on its domain. And then trig functions as well, like sine of x, um, cosine of x, tangent of x, you know, all the ones you've probably learned from pre-calc. Pre so we're going to use this theorem uh, to help us determine continuity. So here's our first example. We have the piecewise defined function uh, f of x, which is 1 minus x squared when x is less than or equal to 1. And then we have the square root of x minus 1 when x is greater than 1. So in that theorem that I just stated uh, a moment ago, 1 minus x squared is continuous on its domain. And its domain is x is less than 1. Now, we don't say equal 1 because we would have to deal with the right-hand limit. And we have this jump from one graph to another. So we're going to hold off on uh, figuring out the continuity at 1. So I know that we're continuous when x is less than 1. And the square root of x minus 1 is continuous on its domain. Now, its domain, by the way, is x is greater than 1. Actually, it's at, the domain is x is greater than or equal to 1, but remember that uh, we're actually concerned about what happens at 1. So that's really all we have left. Uh, this is saying, you know, if we have the number line here, and here's 1, we're saying we're continuous all over here, and we're continuous on this side as well. The only place we got to deal with right now is what's happening at 1. So let's go ahead and go over the requirements for continuity and see if it satisfies all three of them. So our first was, does f of 1 exist? So we go over here, we figure out where x equals 1, which is in this part, right? We got the inequality piece right there. So uh, we do equal 1 in this part, and so we get f of 1 is 1 minus 1 squared which is 1 minus 1, so 0. So does it exist? Yes, and it equals 0. Let's move on to the second condition. Does the limit as x approach 1 of f of x exist? Now this one's trickier because a limit exists when the left and right-hand limits exist. And so let's talk about the left-hand limit real quick. Which function am I using when I'm dealing with the left-hand limit? Meaning, what function am I using when x is slightly to the left of 1? Now, when x is slightly to the left of 1, we're in this region, which means we're going to use 1 minus x squared as my function. And all we're going to do is plug in 1 here, and we get 1 minus 1 squared, which is 1. All right, so that's the left-hand limit. What's the right-hand limit? That's the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. we got to determine which function we're using. So let's go up here. Which, which region has x values slightly to the right of 1 will be this one, right? These are all the x values to the right of 1. So we're going to go ahead and use that function, the square root of x minus 1. And we're going to plug in 1. We get 1 minus 1 is 0. And by the way, I did see my mistake here. This is 0. Uh, I'll go through and I'll fix that. <clears throat> so the left and right hand limit equals 0. So does the limit, the general limit as x approaches 1 exist? It sure does. And it's going to equal 1. Or I'm sorry, equal 0. 
don't know why I keep saying one. Okay, so that's the second condition. Let's go ahead and go to the third condition. Does the limit as x approaches 1, which by the way equals 0, does that equal f of 1? Well, we just said that the limit as x approaches 1 equals 0. And we set up here that f of 1 equals 0. So check. So every single condition or requirement for continuity has been satisfied. So we knew that we are continuous when x is less than 1 and greater than 1. We now know f of x is continuous at x equals 1. So f of x is continuous, well, it's less than 1, greater than 1, and at 1, it's continuous on the whole number line. So from negative infinity to infinity. Now, I'm going to graph 1 minus x squared when x is less than or equal to 1. And there it is. Okay, so notice that we have the closed dot right here because 1 minus x squared goes all the way and all the way to 1 and including 1, right? Because we've got the equal sign. And then I'm going to graph the square root of x minus 1, which just looks like this. So you start at 1. It, it does actually have an open dot there, but it's been closed because of the other part. And so we look like this. Um, so we are continuous. You can see that we uh, never have to jump. We never have any holes. So uh, this also shows us that we're continuous everywhere. Okay, I have an example for you to try. Here's your function. I want you to determine where this function is continuous. You could do it two ways. One, graph it. Or two, do it in the way that we did this video, which is the way I recommend it. All right, good luck.